mind, we will read it together, we will be gentle and, uh, and uh, harmonious as we sing, as we read it. Ready? The Lord has said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives, and your families, father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you their famous, and you will be blessed to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark that evening, he came to see to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Human can produce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, which can tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you can explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? They could even ask. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you don't believe in our testimony. But if you don't believe me, when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned. But a man has come down from heaven, and as Moses lifted out the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in Him will be eternal life. For God loved the world so much that He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent His Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. Amen. Please be seated. A great text for today. And when the Spirit of God moves, you know, everything that we have planned somehow blends very well. He, you know, the, the choruses that our, our team sang that God will do something. God will make a way, you know, even when we don't know, don't understand, have no idea, God will make a way, right? God will make a way. So, so the very good text, uh, music for the day. Um, if, you, if you look at the Webster Dictionary on the word pioneer, this is what, will, what you will see. One who goes before, as into wilderness, preparing for others to follow. Pioneer means somebody who goes before you, even not knowing what's out there. Bravely, this person goes out, you know, and then checks things out. And then we'll say, oh, everything is safe, it's nice. You know, the ground is great for farming, the rivers are clean and fresh, the trees have, uh, trees are healthy, it will bear much fruit for the village, 
you know? Um, and so, as the pioneer will say, folks, come. The soil is healthy. Water is fresh and clean. Trees are all healthy. Come. And so the people come, and then they settle, and then they become a village, right? Um, so, so here is a story about Abraham. Abraham. It is not. He is not Abraham yet. He is only Abraham at this point. Now he he receives a call from God. He hears God speak to him. Genesis 12. And God says, you need to get out. You need to follow me. You need to go. But Abraham have no idea where that is. And often that is true for all of us. When God calls us, sometimes we have absolutely no idea where that destination is. Keeps us down. And we cannot see 
what is outside of that door. There is a book called Jimmy Has a Gun, where, where the story talks about, you know, uh, prisoners, like World War II kind of prisoner story. And these people have been in the prison for so long, and whenever the war calls out people out of their room, they know what is going to happen. They know that this person's name is called out because they're going to take him out and shoot him. And so people in prison were all afraid and scared. When the door of the prison opens and the name is called, nobody wants to get out and walk because they know they will be in trouble. But one day, one day something happens. The prison door is open and the warden comes and he calls out people. This time it was different. The warden was telling them, leave, leave, go. And nobody was moving because they did not believe it. And when eventually this prisoner stood up and walked out, and opened the door, it was wide open to freedom. It's a war story. There was freedom waiting for them outside the door. And yet they were so used to here, they didn't want, they didn't have them to move. And at times, such thing happens for us as people, as believers, as Christians. For as a church, whether it is your profession, whether it is your friendship, you know, whether it is your emotional entanglement, sometimes God says, you need to get out. You know? You need to go. You need to go. And those words are frightening for us. But you know, according to this text, when God calls, when God calls, God has a plan. God has a plan, right? When God calls, He has a plan. Verse 1. God says, I will show you. It's not that God is saying to Abraham, walk yourself in the dark. Go and get lost in the wilderness. No, that's, that's not the story. That is not what is in the text. The text says, I will show you. I will guide you. I will bless you. I will make you live great. You know, all the, look at the, all these promises. In such voice, comes to you and me, whether it is as a, as, a, as a believer or as a congregation. When God says, go, do we trust God to go? Do we trust God to follow the instruction that God is providing us? That if you follow, I will be there. I will show you the way. You know, it's almost like saying, I will be your GPS guide. You know, I will show you the direction you must go. And not only that, if you follow me, I will bless you. Those are critical points, you know, when we obey 